Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. Wow, what a, what a beautiful day today, right? Yeah. So, hope this coming Saturday would be like the same uh, weather uh, the as of today. So, welcome to St. John's and thank you for joining for the in person service. And uh, thank you all for joining uh, to the online uh, Church of Faith through live streaming. Uh, I have uh, some announcements. Please open your bulletin if you're available. And let me tell you about the flowers on the altar. Uh, they are in celebration of Pat Cavus' 87th birthday from daddy, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Happy birthday, Pat! Yeah. Wow. Amazing, right. And a special thanks uh, for the worship today. We give a special uh, thanks to French and Fitchy. Uh, for her solo song, the My Song is a Love Unknown, that we look forward. And uh, we also give a special thanks to Wesley Park uh, for his wonderful harp music, uh, Booty Verse. And also, the I carried his harp this morning, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, next Sunday, uh, Palm Sunday, so uh, Reverend Jim Lemons uh, will uh, deliver uh, this year's Palm Sunday message. And also, the uh, we have a a fellowship hour in Donaldson Hall after service, and plus, uh, we're gonna have a, a children's Easter egg hunt at the outside a grass area. So, in many ways, uh, full variety at next Sunday. Please mark your calendar. Change of date for spring cleanup uh, due to rain yesterday. Our spring cleanup will now be held on this coming Saturday, April the first. 9 a.m. Please uh, stay tuned and uh, uh, please plan uh, to make it this uh, great event. In the Holy Week, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, next Sunday, Palm Sunday, and April 6, uh, Monday, Thursday, uh, we are going to do Living Last Supper at 7.30 p.m. Uh, here in the sanctuary. Uh, April 7th, as we have done in the past, uh, Good Friday at noon, a meditation service. April the 9th, a second Sunday, Easter Sunday, and one big thing is that we are going to do Easter sunrise service at 6.45 a.m. in the amphitheater. So uh, please, uh, they make it uh, to this, uh, how many years, right? I think uh, 2019, that was the, my last experience at the sunrise service. And then 20, the pandemic, and finally, 2023, we are going to resume uh, the sunrise service uh, uh, with Dr. Kitty Yang, right? Yeah, so uh, please uh, they make it a uh, plan to do it at the service. And the bottom line, the thank you note, a ton of a thank you note uh, from Baby Train. Uh, I talked to her yesterday. Uh, she deeply, deeply expresses her thankful heart uh, for all you do uh, for Baby uh, Train. So, um, yeah. Anything else I missed today? Time to worship.
and please join me for the call to worship the Prince in the Bulletin. We follow Christ. Who says, Take up your cross. We follow Christ. Who bids us from We follow Christ. Who summons us to the new life. Come, let us worship our Creator. Amen. Please join me for the affirmation of faith, the hymn book, page 881, Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of the heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, a servant under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father of mine. From death he shall come to church, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Uh, they recognize and follow me. 
So one of the stories in the Bible, and we used to see the story of a blind man. The one common thing is that uh, when those blind men was, were killed by Jesus, and they immediately recognized to who Jesus was in their lives. Healed, right? And the truth, and amazingly, they decided to follow Jesus Christ. So when you grow up a little bit of uh, middle school, uh, you're going to learn from your class imprinting, right? Put your Google it. Imprinting is uh, just a catch. Uh, the uh, the birds, uh, the when they saw uh, the the person who is giving uh, the feed or the water, they just the, the thought that oh this person is like a mother, yeah, amazing. But you know what? We have many many times to have heard the Bible story and the joining church the worship service, all kinds of worship worship service. We have a full, tons of experience, right? But one of the questions in this last decision, are we too person and to follow to Jesus Christ, right? Because we know that Jesus is giving a life to us, the truth to us, the freedom to us. Even Jesus promised a salvation to each of us. But please ask all of us, are we ready to follow? Are we ready to decide to follow Him and to recognize Him as our Savior? That is the one big question during this lecture. Season. All right? I hope you enjoy it the next time and let's pray together. A lot of God, as we are going through this lecture season, that help us ask ourselves at this one single question. Are we ready to recognize the Jesus our Savior? And are we ready to follow the King because He is the Messiah? They have us keep this question in our mind and get the answer as we are going to record at this last season. And then the meet the glorious Easter morning. And to Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Have fun. Be healthy. Would you go back to your pew? Thank you.
to be seated. We join you for the hymn of illumination, the page at uh, the face we see in the black curve of the word, 2244. People need the Lord.
The scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, from verse 35 to 41, and from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 51 and 52, and printed in the bulletin. The Jesus heard that the day had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of a Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Uh, tell me, so that I may believe in him. The Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. The Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see they may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? The Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. This is from the Mark the chapter 10. Jesus, then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. The Holy God, the creator of life, you cut us out of our spiritual dormancy offering us the grace of a new life. That when we see nothing but hopelessness, you surprise us with the breath of your Spirit. You cut us out of our complacency and routines and set us free from our self-imposed bonds and fill us with your Spirit of life, compassion, and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, you anoint the one we pray. Amen. As we are going through uh, this Lenten season, the, one of the things on our to-do list might be uh, checking our faith and its status. As simply speaking, we need to ask ourselves where we are. Uh, to deepen our faith uh, for these special 40 days, and we read the Bible more seriously. We fast, stop all things entertaining us, and do good uh, for others. And this is the reason why uh, we joined the Lenten Bible study and uh, support the OMCO uh, donation campaign. By the way, today is a due day uh, to uh, the support to Syria and Turkey, uh, the people, neighbors uh, through OMCO. And I have a special prayer meetings, like the, the very recent uh, Unite the Women in Faith uh, breakfast prayer meeting, uh, which was very wonderful. So with that, Lent is a season of a tune up uh, to our faith and life. But some of you recall that uh, we read John 9 the last Sunday and knew that uh, John chapter 9 they presents a story of one unnamed blind man only. And this morning, I'd like to share uh, one important lesson uh, from this blind man uh, with you as we are going to wrap up uh, this land soon. I think uh, today's message is uh, my last message in 2023 Lenten season. A careful reading of John chapter 9 that makes you see a very interesting point uh, from this man. What was it? It is what he calls Jesus Christ after recovering his sight. Uh, do you know uh, this man called Jesus uh, three times differently? This is a somewhat interesting point because uh, uh, Simon Peter denied Jesus Christ three times, right? Upon being killed by the Jesus, 
uh, this man got a chance uh, to chat with uh, the neighbors who were interested in how he could be, could be healed. And John chapter 9, verses 10 and 11 says, But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Silo and wash. And then I went and washed and received my sight. From above, this man called Jesus, the man called Jesus. Considering that this man had no pre-understanding and no background of Jesus Christ, the expression, the man called Jesus, is understandable. Although some of you may not like this expression, right? This is not polite, this is not faithful, uh, this is a little bit secular, the man called Jesus, right? Please remember that this man was blind uh, from birth. After this, the, he was summoned by uh, the Pharisees and had to answer uh, whatever they asked. I believe it was not so much a conversation as an investigation. At the end of that conversation in between, here is the final question uh, from the Pharisees and uh, the final answer uh, from the man, uh, which is in John chapter 9, uh, verse 17. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The how did the man did the man call Jesus in this verse? Surprisingly, this man was calling Jesus a prophet. The who was this man speaking to? In front of the Pharisees, the most picky guys in Jewish society. And this man called Jesus a prophet. He was very courageous. He was very bored. Maybe he did not recover his eyesight because he didn't recognize the who they were in front of him. Could we say that he was growing in faith in the meantime? The last part of John chapter 9 presents a conversation between Jesus and this man. It was a highlight. So when this man met Jesus Christ, his remark was very impressive. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. The John chapter 9, verse from 35 to 38 says, Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Then Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Please remember what this man called, had called Jesus back to back. The man called Jesus a prophet, and now, Lord. I have no idea what made him change his mind when he called Jesus Christ. If he was just a brand new Christian, then what we see from him in the story today resonates with us seriously. Think about it. Although we have normal visions, we do not see our face grow or mature. Sometimes we feel that we are stuck in faith without going forward, without going backward, just the same old, same old, same old. Even for me, I feel that, that feeling. What am I doing sometimes? Lots of meetings, 
the larger of the works. And so sometimes I missed the, the, the opportunity uh, to check out uh, my faith, my spirituality. Although we have attended the worship service from birth, we know that the calling Jesus our Lord is not a matter of how long we've attended church. This is not your goal, how many years you have played, right? Yeah. Upon recovering his vision, this man began to see Jesus seriously. He began to call him the man called Jesus, then he called him a prophet. Finally, he confessed, he is the Lord. And he told Jesus, I believe you, then worship him. You know what? This man just got the, from his brightness. The, his last action was worship the Lord, right? His ending action was worship him. That's it. I believe the man who recovered his sight in John chapter 9 there would be a good role model in our faith journey. That when he just began to see uh, with his recovered vision, he must have been tempted to do many, many other things, right? Yeah. So go to restaurant, right? And uh, go to the, uh, uh, the some entertaining places. Among so many choices, he saved his time uh, to uh, proclaim that Jesus as a healer and identified who he was clearly. And presumably, he needed his courage to do uh, this. In terms of a political or a diplomatic perspective, we know, we all know that it would be, for, it'd be better for us not to say something clearly, although we know it clearly, right? The keeping a little bit lukewarm stance, uh, that might be uh, profitable. But this man, the proclaimed what he knew about Jesus clearly. In this way, he experienced his faith grow. The huge question for you, the how much do we know about Jesus Christ? And how much courageous are we to share uh, our Jesus with others? Now, how much is our faith the growing uh, day by day? If you want to answer uh, these questions, please refresh what you know, what you remember about this man in John chapter 9. That the chapter 9 is your go-to chapter uh, when you feel your faith in it in start. Before the closing of this sermon, here's one more blind man in Mark chapter 10 uh, to share with you. His name is uh, Bartimaeus. He was not blind from birth uh, like this man in John chapter 9. But let me see again. That means uh, he saw in the past. The Bartimaeus that became blind uh, was healed by Jesus and recovered his vision. Here's what makes Bartimaeus so special. It is his reaction uh, just after recovering his vision. Let me read Mark chapter 10, verses 51 and 52 again. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do uh, for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. The Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on his way. In verse 52, here is what we should carefully note. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Upon being healed by Jesus, what did Bartimaeus do? He followed Jesus on the way. He followed Jesus on the way. Simply speaking, his first reaction after recovering his vision was to follow Jesus immediately. The blind man healed by Jesus in John chapter 9 
began to identify Jesus amazingly. The man called Jesus a prophet and Lord. And don't you think that these blind men were way better than Jesus' disciples or us? With our normal vision, what are we doing now? Are we ready to follow the Jesus immediately? What if following Jesus is not glorious or benefitable or advantageous? The one more lesson from Bartimaeus is here. Bartimaeus is presented in Mark chapter 10. From the next chapter, Mark 11, we see that Jesus was entering Jerusalem to face his final moment. So, if Bartimaeus followed Jesus in Mark 10, he must have gone with Jesus to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, what Bartimaeus saw about Jesus after regaining his sight must be suffering, passion, the cross, and death. No healing miracles, no feeding grace, and no Jesus' wonderful sermons, message, and uh, teachings as Jesus' disciples experienced. Totally different following. If so, the Bartimaeus was with Jesus in the worst moment, in the worst place in Jesus' life. Think about it. What Jesus' disciples do in his worst moment and in his worst place. They denied, they betrayed, they deserted. Here is the reason why his following Jesus should be highly, highly valued. As I mentioned earlier, the next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Then we are going to enter the Holy Week. It is time to see the Jesus clearly. It's time to follow him, the faithful. It is time to check out where we are before wrapping up this Lenten season. So how would you like to finish your Lenten journey this year, 2023? And when you recover your vision, what would you like to do first? Amen. Now I'd like to invite you uh, to share your joys and concern. Wow, you know what? We have a lot of joys uh, today. Again, Pat, happy birthday, 87, yeah, right? And then uh, today, we truly welcome uh, Bert Wood and Gail, right? Yeah, uh, welcome. And Don Young, uh, I think after a little bit, uh, after several weeks, uh, the, uh, he joined us today. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, we, we have a visitor today, right? And uh, uh, the one next to the Virginia. Uh, yeah, the welcome, welcome. So, yeah. Is it your first time uh, to be with us? I've been here before. Uh, before. It's kind of return, right? Uh, that's good. All right. Uh, welcome. So hope to see you again. Yeah. And then, who else uh, would like to show you? Yes, Jay. Well, uh, to continue to oh. yeah. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Gordon. Well, continue to do with mom. Uh, uh, mom's uh, improving greatly, and is able to do uh, a lot of uh, exercises necessary to be able to uh, be in the kind of physical condition that it must be, still doing along well, still uh, shooting for a target release date of a week from Wednesday, April 5th, uh, see which we'll, we'll be glad about that, and we'll see uh, if it's too soon for mom to join us for Easter Sunday, but hopefully uh, see you uh, the Sunday after, and just wanted to uh, thank everybody for the uh, CA cards and uh, love, prayers, and good wishes uh, to the send. And for Pastor J.W. Uh, with his uh, calls and visits at times. Uh, so uh, just 
I appreciate the way all of you care, and I'm glad I can report good progress. And um, uh, in the near future, Mom being able to come home again. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Uh, just for you know that uh, the baby is just celebrating uh, her 94 years old birthday uh, this coming Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, right. So uh, please keep a uh, baby in your thoughts. Who else? Pastor, if I may. Yeah. I'm the man he spoke about today. Four weeks ago, I didn't totally, but figuratively, lost my son. The only thing I've been able to read in the Washington Post in the last four weeks has been the words. The Washington Post. This morning, for the first time, I was able to read one of the two headlines on the front page of the Washington Post. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm no stranger to vision problems. I've had them for 60 years. But I want you to know where I turned when all this happened. I turn to the Lord and have had many, many conversations with the Lord over the last four weeks. The Lord has responded. And I want you to hear my testimony. The Lord does love us. The Lord cares for us. The Lord will provide for us as he has provided for me. I hope I get better still but I know that the Lord is there for me. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, right. Yeah. Amazing the testimony uh, this morning. Thank you. And who else? Yes. I'd like to ask for prayers for my brother and my family. Please keep uh, the Marty's brother Buzz uh, in your prayer. Uh, he is, uh, he is uh, now in the hospice at the care. Uh, lives in Canadian board. That is the reason why uh, Marty was limited to the visit uh, to her brother. So hope that uh, you can do it soon. Yeah. Yeah, certainly we will uh, we'll keep the, the Buzz in our prayers. Who else? Susan? My husband John has COVID this week, that's why we're all wearing masks up here. And he's isolating uh, on our third floor, but, so I just ask for prayers for his continued recovery. Okay. Uh, Susan, you can feed him, right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> just kidding. All right, then. All right, yeah. Please keep that John Novak in your prayer. Anything else you'd like to share your joys and concerns? Wow. If not, uh, please remembering and thinking of all uh, these concerns and the prayer wish. Let's take a moment to pray in silence. Let's pray together in silence. Loving God, thank you for uh, your presence uh, in this time and the moment. Uh, you know the, all our concerns and uh, names that are lifted up and um, the prayer wish in this moment. As we are going to wrap up a decision of Lent this year, they help us, they sharpen our vision to see you and help us to confess you as our Lord, the Messiah, and help us to follow you day by day, whether it is in good days or bad days. We want to be your faithful disciples. 
of Jesus Christ. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray at the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <coughs> Would you please stand up if you are able, and please join me for the closing hymn, The Face We Sing, The Black Herbert One, page 2212, My Life Flows On. Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and redeem, so God sent you into the world this day to be light and love, healing and hope. Go now to be light for the world, and may the grace and peace of God the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sustainer, come upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Pode be seated.